If I don't know who is in front of me, how can I actually operate? If you don't want, are not interested to know the ISPD, but as well my colleagues and myself, you're not going to take anything out of this conference because you don't know what, what is your guest, who is your guest, and unfortunately, sometimes both in companies and in states, we forget to research about our guests. It's not the case of Oman, and this we, we saw, how detailed Oman uh, is in related to the guests. But what is very interesting is for us to know who's in front of us. We never know. Actually, since I was very young, I was already a um, chief of protocol for my own father. I was already two years old when I started with this profession, so imagine. Uh, and the thing that I always learned, it was understand what is the values behind all of us? What is the culture we represent? What is our religion? What are our political system? Who is coming? What is the preferences? What will we eat? What will we not eat? How we introduce the people? What is our title? Are you a doctor? Are you a professor? Are you His uh, Excellency? Are you Your Highness? Are you um, Mr? Are you Mrs? Are you married, not married? So, so when we talk about protocol, and we are talking about corporate diplomacy, is the small details that actually can make us perfect in our human level. Attention. Because like I said, we are not perfect. We have to fall down, we have to repeat the things again and again. But there's some structural level that we have to do in our daily lives or to learn or some techniques. And what means this? Was a man that's a Kierkegaard, that is a famous philosopher for Europeans, and the Europeans sometimes they have this uh, um, arrogance to say that we know a lot, we know a lot. It's not true. We just know the things that are limited in the frontiers of our countries. So we know the same as you do, we know the same as Americans do, we know the same as uh, Southeast Asians or Far East Asians do. We just know our limits. But how we can jump our limits maintaining our national identity? I can see uh, colleagues from Qatar, that I know your country very well, colleagues from Kuwait, I know your country very well, from Greece, from France. Uh, we, how we do this? There's one strategy. And the strategy is actually what Kierkegaard said, if I want to succeed in guiding a human being, I must find him where he is to help a person. I must, of course, understand more than he does, but above all, I must understand what he understands. So if we don't understand what is the other one thinking, what if you don't understand what the other person has to give to us as guests of honors, have gift giving in the companies, for example, sitting around the table, how we identify. Protocol is very visual. And for you to, understand, to know me a little bit better, I'm, I'm originally an economist. But it's only after that I did uh, all my, my master's in research in international politics and international relations, uh, so in the diplomatic field. But only after, before I was economist. Economists to create algorithms and work in the World Bank. So for the, the, my colleague that is from the World Bank or the National Bank of Oman that I've met before, what happened is that protocol is, should be on the service of us, not the opposite. Sometimes what happens is the people say, ah, but Ines, we should follow the rules. Yes, as much as we can. Because the rules are there to facilitate our life. If you know that I'm from Belgium, there's a rule that you already can say, I like very much chocolate from Belgium. You can study that. You can know to say this sentence. What happens if you say you don't know where my father is from? Maybe I'm from another nationality. Maybe I speak other languages. Maybe I was raised in China. Maybe, maybe, maybe. You don't know. It's normal. We never know until we ask. And actually, we have to jump to be able and to be courageous to jump to the other culture and to jump to the other place and to say, I would like to know. And this is the first step of corporate diplomacy. The second step, actually, is very interesting, is what we call 
what means successful communication. We have in ISPD a methodology, is a triangle. In the past, it was state to state. So that means we have an ambassador, a consul, that send a letter to another consul. And to say, I'm going to visit from Brussels, I'm coming to Oman. And then Oman answered to Brussels and said, we accept you, so please come to visit. And actually, the event starts to be organized. Nowadays, you can tweet me. You can WhatsApp me. When are you coming to Oman? Which, your Oman Air flights will land at what time? Everything changes. So the communication is no longer the same communication we had before. Is it? What do you think? It's not the same. The level of communication is now transversal. So what is happening? We have more capacity to commit blunders. What mean blunders? That we say the wrong thing by the wrong communication mean. We can immediately offend someone just because we did not do the things properly. And it's too fast now. The world is too fast. That's why we call innovation in diplomacy. We have to innovate constantly. And even if we don't want, do you think sometimes I want changes? No. Sometimes I want to be with my family at home and not to be so, so fast the changes. But they are happening. And it's a truth. And well, we adapt or we don't. So what happened is that the companies created a structure that are representing the states. And you say, really? But the states needs the company to create profits, to bring more people into the country, like tourism, like um, airplanes, like Omentel, one of our sponsors that is here, telephones, everything represents the state. So as much as the image of the company is transmitted outside in a positive outcome, in a positive communication, better for the state. Then there's the opposite. Companies cannot survive without the state. There's something called reputation that is linked intimately with the state. That our reputation that this country gives to us. If Oman Air represents the state, as well the state represents Oman Air. So it's a growth together that 100 years ago 70 years ago, 50 years ago, 25 years ago, was not happening like that. They call it advocacy. Nowadays, we call corporate diplomacy. But not only this, there's another in the triangle, there's another bottom that at the end of the day is us, all of us. Civil society, the people that will buy the, the, you know, the, the, the charging of the phone from Omantel or Orado, the people that we uh, will choose Qatar Airways or Oman Air, or the people that will choose Lufthansa, we don't choose Lufthansa anymore, um, to, to come, for example, to Oman. So there is, everything should be connected in our methodology, in our opinion, in this big um, circle. So we need the corporate values before. If we don't have the corporate values, we cannot advance. Without values, nobody can do anything. We can think we can, but it's only short term. It's only short term. And I think companies and states, we run our lives for long term. Then we need for the corporate lives, we need people. We need us. I can pass a video and sitting here. Then we need to go international, because nowadays we cannot survive alone anymore. So we go international. Then we have something called psychology dimensions. That is how we think. If you think, how we think. If we are from Europe, if you are from Oman, if I'm from Europe but I have experience in Oman, if I am from China living in Brussels but raised in Latin America and now uh, passed a full year in Qatar or Kuwait, for example, if I worked in the company and then I worked in the state and then I have a, a corporate work and a public work. Nowadays, this is happening. Culture is where we come from. Then we have negotiation. Is the middle path. Usually, it's the most difficult path. And after this negotiation, we take a decision. For your opinion, what do you think is the most difficult part? 
is the culture or is the decision making? Who says culture? That is the most difficult. Nobody. Who thinks that the most difficult part is the decision making? Okay? Why? Who wants to, to share why? You know, if I'm wrong, you correct me. But here, there's a, a lot of factors that entered actually in our process of decision making. We all want to make a good decision making in everything. Who wants to fail? Nobody. I don't want. Nobody would like to make a wrong decision. But the problem is always in the negotiation level. Because negotiations, both in corporate world, both in the methodology that I'm saying, we have different stakeholders involved. And stakeholders mean state, the consumer, means the people that are just the, the normal consumer within the end of the line, but as well the consumers in the beginning. And this is always made by the negotiation. It's always made how we can bring something that is added value to our society. 